what if I told you that there is a strange phenomenon happening all over the world? It mostly involves US government officials and military personnel. Apparently, they all complained of hearing strange ringing sounds, which also are able to cause pain and can even disrupt person's cognitive abilities. This thing may have started just six years ago, and nobody has quite figured it out. Up to 1000 people have been affected. This strange effect which afflicts government or people is now known as Havana Syndrome. Almost sounds like an exotic fling, but the reason for this name is that it started in Cuba. One of the locations for that sound is famous Havana Hotel. Some people in that hotel started feeling pressure, vibrations or a sensation comparable to driving a car with the window partly rolled down. These noises may have lasted from few seconds up to 30 minutes. And guys, this is not this thing. US government itself officially acknowledged this phenomena and uh, took part in the investigation. Uh, uh, claims of those kinds of uh, phenomena. Why did they bother, you may ask? It's just uh, some annoying sound. Well, it appears that in some cases it was able to cause symptoms such as uh, hearing loss, memory loss and uh, nausea. So it wasn't just a simple sound. It was able to do a physical damage. In fact, some officials have left active service due to complications from this condition. It was speculated that someone was using some sort of a sonic weapon. Since these weapons can produce a directional, for example, 30 degree cone of audible sound, it is quite possible that someone was able to target. For example, when Somali pirates were approaching uh, the cruise ship Seaborn Spirit, captain ordered to use a long range acoustic device which successfully deterred those pirates. I suspect that the device had around 160 decibels, which is as loud as top fuel dragsters. However, sonic weapon theory has been discredited. It would be awfully difficult to beam a sound without revealing the location of the weapon. So what are the other theories? And which one is most plausible? Let's start with the theory of ultrasound. Ultrasound waves have frequencies higher than the upper audible limit of human hearing. We may hear up to 20,000 Hz frequency sound, which is the high pitch sound. Anything above that, and even people blessed with phenomenal hearing, will hear nothing. So you think. Although ultrasound cannot be heard by humans, at the high decibel level it can still cause a direct damage to human ears. Basically, if it's uh, loud enough, the ultra-high frequency sound can do some damage. So a team of computer scientists at University of Michigan reported that the Havana syndrome could have been caused by malfunctioning or improperly placed Cuban surveillance equipment. It happens when two devices work on the same frequency, so they start fighting, which creates those sounds. However, since this has happened all over the world, not just in Cuba, it is highly unlikely that all spies messed this up. Another theory was it was caused by cricket noises, which is uh, quite ridiculous. Well, the reason for this theory was that people were able to record these sounds with their cell phones. So they were able to blame something audible. However, Biomedical engineers Kenneth Foster and James Lynn said that they should stop smoking. No, they actually didn't say that, but uh, they are actually skeptical of such theory. They say that these cricket noises were a perfect way to mask the real evil hiding behind the sound of crickets. Let me introduce you to the leading theory, which is microwaves. The US National Academies found that the most plausible explanation is that officers are being attacked by directed pulsed radio frequency energy, or microwaves. This technology actually dates back to the Cold War. For example, during 1950s to 1970s there was a weird signal going on. It is known as Moscow Signal. Apparently, a microwave transmission was directed at US Embassy. 
The signal wasn't super strong, definitely not enough to cook some popcorns, however, these signals were 100 times more powerful than they should have been. During the 50s, embassy staff located the building from which this signal was coming and shielded the walls of the embassy. During regular monitoring of the signal, the beams were found to have increased in intensity in 1975, so Soviets increased the power to penetrate shielded walls. US Ambassador Walter Stossel fell ill in 1975, with symptoms including bleeding from the eyes. Later, he died of cancer. Strangely enough, multiple other ambassadors and the embassy staff died of cancer. However, there has been no evidence that microwaves can cause cancer, but uh, this is still suspicious. So if we go back to the recent times, these Havana syndrome attacks look quite similar. For example, in China, a diplomat, Catherine Werner, was suddenly awoken one night. Uh, really bad hives. I woke up with headaches every day. She fell ill, headache, nausea and loss of balance for months. Her mother flew out to Catherine for the rescue, but the mother also fell ill. She had dogs, but the dogs also became ill. These dogs even started vomiting blood. When asked about what this woman heard, they explained that they have experienced a high-pitched sound in one room and pulsating sound in another. Scientists shoved those afflicted of Havana syndrome into a MRI machine. Apparently, they have found that these poor people have lost some brain matter. To be exact, white matter part of the brain which is responsible for delivering signals from one place to another. These patients have lost 5% of white matter. People with reduced white matter tend to have memory problems, loss of balance, difficulty of multitasking and depression. So you mean to tell me this was caused by a microwave pulses? But how come people can hear those pulses? Microwaves don't make sound, right? Well, normally we can't hear microwaves, but there is a thing called Frey effect. Even completely deaf person can hear it. Pulsed microwave frequencies generate clicking, buzzing or knocking sounds directly inside the human head. These microwave pulses hit brain for a very short period of time which creates pressure waves. Those waves travel to part of inner ear named cochlea. There is even a weapon developed with the name Medusa, which shoots pulsed modulated microwave radiation waves to disperse crowds. So we kinda figured out what causes it, but the main question is why? What's the point of making government officials uncomfortable? Well, it might be that whoever is causing this does it unintentionally. Let me introduce you to this thing. It also is called the thing. This object was gifted by Soviets to United States ambassador. It looks harmless enough. However, Soviets secretly placed a very peculiar surveillance bug inside. Uh, you can see the, the antenna. This bug doesn't need any electricity or battery, and since it has no electricity, it is extremely hard to detect. So this thing hung in the ambassador's Moscow residential study for seven years. During those years there were many bug sweeps, but nobody was able to find it. So how the hell does it work without electricity? Well, this device has a passive cavity resonator. Beats me what this thing is, but uh, listen to this. Basically, Soviets from outside of the building sent a powerful radio signal to the device which powered and activated it. It also has a thin membrane which vibrated due to voices in the office. So the theory goes that since these listening devices are hard to detect, they may be a very popular way to spy on government officials. But in order to activate those bugs, spies have to send strong electromagnetic signals. So it might be that all those cases all around the world are just that, using hard to find bugs which are activated with harmful microwaves. Even if this is the most plausible explanation, we are still not 100% sure. Still not as mysterious as that unknown squeaky sound in an old car. 